is now time for member statements. I recognize, I recognize the member for Mississauga Moulton. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Madam Speaker, things we learn the best are the things we learn by doing. Research shows experiential learning has the highest rate of knowledge retention at 90% as it provides an opportunity to see, feel, and experience as you're learning. Since 1975, the Ontario Legislature Internship Program has been a distinctive example how, how experiential learning prepares new graduates to be job ready. Each year, from September to June, 10 motivated university graduates complete paid internship on all aspects of legislature with the MPPs from both sides. In last 48 years, 307 MPPs have hosted 416 non-partisan interns. OLIPS opens the door for its alumni to have distinguished career in many fields with former interns becoming architects, uh, academic, lawyer, public servant, public relation, as well as members or even becoming elected officials. For an example, Tim Murphy became MPP in 93, became Chief of Staff of Prime Minister Paul Martin. Here at home, Patrick Sackville is the current Chief of Staff to Premier Ford, was OLIP as well. So I want to say thank you to my OLIP interns, Gurkamal, Heban, Esma, and Bridget for being part of my office, learning while contributing, and bringing a new perspective. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Further member statements. I recognize the member for Nickel Bell. Thank you, Speaker. People in Ontario want to age at home. They do not want to move into a long-term care home. We know how to support people in their own home where they want to be. We have the knowledge, we have the skills, but frail elderly Ontarians face a broken home care system. In Ontario, for-profit home care companies are more interested in making a profit than in providing people the care they need in order to stay home safely and respectfully. The personal support worker was in my office a few days ago asking how he can continue to service the clients in Dowling and Onaping, two northern rural areas of my riding, after Canadian Shield cut his mileage in half to 25 cents a kilometer. Speaker, most home care workers do not get paid between clients. In my riding, they will drive for 30 or 45 minutes between clients, all on their own time, for 25 cents a kilometer. It doesn't matter how hard they work, it is impossible to make enough money to survive. Many PSW love their clients. They are good at what they do, but they have no choice but to leave the home care system in order to feed their kids and pay the rent. Right now, Paramed, a for-profit home care company, is withholding money that the government has sent for PSW in order to gain concession from their PSW. This is happening under this government watch. It is a shame. Thank you very much. Member statements, the member for Scarborough, Agent Court. Mr. Speaker, as part of our government promise to build more transit in Scarborough, the government allocated $1 million to start the studies on extending the Shepherd subway line from Don Mills to McCowan. Accordingly, Metrolinks organized public consultations in November 2023. On December 6, 2023, MPP Raymond Cho, MPP David Smith, and I organized a town hall meeting to seek input from community, organizations, residents, and stakeholders. The town hall participants unanimously spoke in favor of extension of the Shepherd Line to be a subway and not LRT. The following community organizations, the Shepherd Subway Action Coalition, the Aging Court Village Community Association, Heatwood Redpayer Association, S.D. Ferguson, Pleasant View Community Association, the Federation of Asian Canadians, the Board of MTCC 872 Condo Board, the Chinese Cultural Centre of Greater Toronto, the Rosewood Community Association, 
and the Filipino Center of Toronto presented their studies and analysis in support of subway extension. During the town hall and in their written submissions, the community organizations made persuasive and well-supported points to extend the subway line on Shepherd Avenue East. In addition, during the January 20, 2024 pre-budget consultation in Scarborough, a substantial number of Scarborough organizations also advocated for the subway option. Thank you very much. Member Statements. The member for Waterloo. Uh, thank, thank you very much. Uh, speaker, yesterday I attended the Federal Provincial Conference simulation in Waterloo. Waterloo Region students come together to simulate the annual Federal Provincial meetings where they discuss solutions to the problems the country is facing. We are fortunate to have teachers that believe it is imperative for students to truly understand the operations of the Canadian federal and provincial system and step into the shoes of politicians. In partnership with the University of Waterloo, the first conference was launched in 1965 with Stephen Langdon uh, from KCI serving as the Prime Minister. And interestingly enough, Langdon went on to become an NDP member of Parliament. Since then, FedProv has been a highlight of the academic year for students across Waterloo, and they just celebrated its 59th year. Uh, yesterday was also the inaugural launch at Wilfrid Laurier University, and this is the beginning of a truly progressive partnership with the Waterloo Region District School Board and WLU. Speaker, the simulation is a unique opportunity for youth to gain deeper understanding of the decision-making process and the complexities of governance, something that we in this room know all too well. It fosters a sense of civic engagement and prepares young people to be informed and active citizens, which we need more than ever. Thank you to the educators who continue to ensure that FedProv continues year after year, and I'm sure the future politicians that you are mentoring and supporting thank you, as do we in this legislature. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Member statements. The member for Whitby. Thank you, Speaker. I'm pleased to uh, share with my colleagues that $476,000 from the Ontario Trillium Foundation will be directed towards five nonprofit organizations in the town of Whitby and other parts of the region of Durham, ensuring safe and accessible programming, activities, and spaces for local residents. Speaker, whether it's purchasing equipment, building new spaces, or completing renovations, these grants will have a positive impact on the region of Durham. Now, Speaker, the organizations receiving these grants, Winreach Farm, the Sunrise Development Support Services Group, County Town Singers, and the Whitby Curling Club. They all play a pivotal role in enriching the lives of Whitby residents and contributing to a strong and prosperous region of Durham. Speaker, these grants go beyond financial support. It's about making life better for people in the region of Durham. It's about, Speaker, creating opportunities for communities to thrive. Thank you, Speaker. Thank you very much. Member Statements, the member for Ottawa Centre. Thank you, Speaker. Uh, the House is reconvened, but since we were last here, two great Canadians have passed away and had an opportunity to attend a celebration of life for both of them. So I want to talk about Ed Broadbent and I want to talk about Daryl Cramp. So I had occasion to be at Dominion Chalmers Centre with current and former elected officials to celebrate the life of Ed Broadbent that many people don't realize, but Ed won by 15 votes in a close three-way race in his hometown of Oshawa in 1968, went on to serve this country, led our party federally for 14 years, was a friend to people from all caucuses, and it was wonderful to be in that room and to remember Ed as a human being, Ed as someone who believed Canada could be a place of opportunity for everyone. And I want to say, Speaker, politics is also full of surprises, because I found the same to be true of Daryl Cramp. Mr. Cramp was the chair of the government caucus for 2018 when we were both elected to this House, but he had served Canada in other capacities federally before that. And I had occasion in this building, after a very difficult debate in this House, to be up on the third floor where both of our offices were, hanging my head, and Mr. Cramp came over, put his arm on my shoulder, and said, what's wrong, Joel? And he said, I'm having a hard time with the heat in this place. He said, take the heat and let it power you to work for your people. 
One of the things that was said at a celebration of life, Speaker, I take to the bank, and it is, you can get a lot done in politics, Daryl used to say, if you don't worry about taking credit. Amen to that. Rest in peace, Ed. Rest in peace, Daryl. Thank you. Member statements. The member for Bruce Gray Owen Sound. Colleagues, I want to tell you about a great Ontario event I had the pleasure of attending this past February 2nd, Groundhog Day in Wyerton. Groundhog Day started back in 1956 when Wyerton resident Mac McKenzie donned a fur hat, dug a burrow in the snow, and made a weather prognostication. The next day, the picture was in the paper and the annual tradition was born. The morning began with a beautiful display of fireworks at 7 a.m. Wyerton is nestled right on the shores of Georgian Bay, so the fireworks were very special. At 7.40, the McLaren Pipe and Drum Band led us to the stage. The sound of bagpipes is also extra special on a frosty winter morning. Town criers Bruce Kruger and McGregor Tannehill were both dressed in their bright red uniforms, and their message to the crowd of 500 was clear and loud. I was in the group known as the Shadow Cabinet, which included Mayor Jay Kirkland, Ronnie Ottawell, and Reagan McKenzie, the daughter of founder Mac McKenzie. We were all in white tuxedos and top hats. Wired and Willie then joined us on stage with his amazing handler, Gord Glover. Willie looked great and was in a chatty mood. Mayor Kirkland listened intently, considered what he'd heard, and proudly announced Willie's forecast, an early spring. Colleagues, this is a great event for Wyerton and for our province. Thank you, Willie, for your great work. See you next year. And join us. Thank you. Member statements. The member for Haldeman, Norfolk. Thank you, Speaker. I rise this morning as a Delhi girl to honour a hometown boy who served and protected members and staff at Queen's Park for nearly 32 years up until his recent retirement. That hometown boy is none other than Rick Boone, here in the gallery today with his wife Gina and dad John. A tireless worker, Rick was passionate about the Assembly's responsibility in supporting the function of Parliament and he did his utmost to up uphold the critical importance of this Assembly's autonomy, independence and neutrality. Although his illustrious career saw him wear many hats, Rick is most proud of serving as a member of the Armed Response Unit, as well as Operations Manager within the Precinct Properties Branch and Commander of the Services Public Safety Unit. Alongside his countless accomplishments within this building, Rick was awarded the Diamond Jubilee Medal and Peace Officer Exemplary Service Medal. When I arrived at Queen's Park on the heels of the 2022 election, it was Rick who first knocked at my door to ensure I was settling in and to ask if there was anything I needed. Rick sends gratitude to the members who improve security and building services, and he conveys special thanks to former Sergeant-at-Arms Dennis Clark and Director Yelena Besuchich for their support and inspiration. He offers thanks to the MPPs that he had the honour of serving, even those he had the pleasure of arresting. <laughs> Speaker, I've known the Boone family since I was a child, a family that is love, loved and respected in our neck of the woods, and I think we are truly blessed that the Boone family shared with us their son, husband, and father for so many years. Rick Boone, an exemplary employee and a very true friend. Enjoy retirement, Rick. Thank you very much. Member statements. The member for Oakville. Thank you, Speaker. Great to, be, uh, great to be back in the House. Today, as we celebrate Black History Month, I'd like to reflect on the deep roots and contributions of Black Canadians. Today, I rise to honour that heritage, beginning with the historic town of Oakville, a symbol of hope and freedom in the journey in the Underground Railroad. Oakville became one of the main critical endpoints to the Underground Railroad network in the mid-19th century. There are many untold stories of courage and determination of individuals who, despite their perils, found sanctuary within our community. Their journeys from slavery to freedom, 
aided the support by the support of Oakville's residents, embody our town's spirit of inclusivity, compassion, and justice. It is crucial to recognize and celebrate the vibrant organizations that continue to uplift and support Oakville's Black community. I want to thank Evangeline Chima, the founder and the CEO of Black Mentorship Inc., for her outstanding leadership and dedication for of Black professionals within our community. The work done by BMI is building pathways of success and resilience. Furthermore, I had the privilege of experiencing the Canadian Caribbean Association of Halton's Black History Monthly Art Exhibit. This event, under the expert curation of Joanne Butterfield and the talented artists who shared their profound expressions of heritage and identity, has been well received in Oakville. Your dedication to celebrating Black heritage and promoting inclusivity and understanding our community is amazing. Let us all continue to support and participate in these valuable community initiatives during Black History Month and, just as importantly, throughout the entire year. Yes. Thank you, Speaker. Thank you. Member Statements, the member for Hastings, Lennox and Adams. Thank you very much, Speaker. As was already mentioned in the House today, many of you, and most of you know, we lost a great Canadian this month. Daryl Cramp was a member of this House in the last term. He was also a federal member for 11 years and a member of Municipal Council for two terms. It was Daryl who encouraged me to run and to seek for this role as he was retiring. Over the past many years, I've heard a particular phrase from Daryl many times in his speeches and in general conversation. It was a piece of advice that he gave to me, and I believe it was a mantra in his own life. He said, lead with your heart. With the love of his life, Carol Ann at his side, always at his side, Daryl led with his heart in his faith and his love for his family and his community and in absolutely everything he did. A few minutes with Daryl, and you knew he was genuine. A mutual friend once described him as a man who you instinctively wanted to follow because of the warmth of his voice and the twinkle in his eye. He worked to improve whatever he set his mind to, and he always worked well with all of those around him engaged. He achieved many great things for his beloved country, province, and his home. I personally am better for having known him, for having learned from him, and I will miss him dearly. On behalf of my wife Heidi, myself, and the people of Hastings, Lennox, and Addington, I would like to express our greatest condolences to the entire Cramp family. Thank you so much for sharing Daryl with us for so many years. Thank you very much. That concludes our members' statements for this morning. Introduction of visitors.